Hello there, it's Vlad from Manta Gamers back here again with another tutorial on how to program in C++. I'm just quickly installing Programmer's Notepad here because I realised they didn't have it installed uh, because I uninstalled it for this tutorial. Um, so once you install that, it's pretty easy. You just download and install. Probably should have shown how to do that, but I didn't. So there you go. And we're just going to launch it up here. This is where we're going to be doing most of our stuff now because this is sort of a good environment to be doing stuff in. So what we're going to do is we're going to, because I forgot to do this last time, is make a template um, folder for this. Because we've got our day zero, this is going to be, I'm going to put these all into days so I can show you my progress as I go through. And this one's just going to be called template. In fact, we'll call it day template. Just so it goes to the top because we've got space there. So in our template we're going to have, um, well, we need to open this in programmer's notepad. Now we'll empty out this save, in fact we'll empty out all that, save, uh, delete that, and we're going to put two new files in here, um, we're going to call this one compile, oops, compile, and run, dot bat, and in here I'm just going to put in, um, uh, what should I put in, uh, echo, you don't really need to know what any of this means, but I think that's right. Uh, I take echo off. Um, yep. G plus plus main dot cpp minus o main pause main um, compile and run. Uh, so sorry about that, that's just a bit complicated. Uh, you don't really need to know what any of this means. It will be, just so you can see that I'm not giving you any viruses and stuff, but this will be uh, in the downloads below. So when I run that, it should just compile and run this. So that's it compiled with no errors. And that's it not run. Okay, it didn't run for some reason. Dot .exe. Let's try that now. That's it compiled. And that's it. Yep, that is it running because there's nothing in there, of course. Silly me. So we can get rid of that. That works fine. That's our compiling and running working great. So now we've got our template day. We're just going to copy and paste that and call it day one. Now, today, as I said, or maybe I didn't, uh, we're going to be covering all of the, um, well, types of variables, really, and how to define them or declare them. So we're just going to have this as our basic setup. You don't really need any include files for this. What we're going to just do is I'm going to explain what all of these different uh, types of variable are. First we've got our char. What a char is, is basically a letter. Um, and it can either be a letter or a number. If it's a letter then it can be any letter you like. It can be char of I don't know, an S. Or it could be char of a number between 0 and 255, so it's one byte. Uh, we can put that as I don't know, 13. Um, the next variable that's quite useful to have is an integer. An integer is just a number, but you can't have decimals in, in, in integers. Um, they do go up quite high, you can have it between 0 and it's, I can't remember what it is, it's something like, uh, something like billion, I don't know. So that's nine zeros. I think it's five billion, four billion, four billion, I think. So between zero and four billion. Um, then we have our booleans. I think I pronounced that right, boolean. A boolean is basically just true or false. We can have true and we can have false. Um, next we have uh, floating numbers. These are numbers that are um, that can be, that can have a decimal point. You don't really use these very much because, well, they're just, meh, they're a bit tricky to use. I, I don't know. I, I never use f uh, floating numbers. So there's not really much point in them. I prefer to use doubles. What a double is, is any number you can think of. Uh, any number which has between 0 and 15 digits can be negative, can have a decimal point, can be anything you like. Uh, the next thing we have is... Well, that's, that's pretty much it, I think. Double equals 
any number you like. So, how do you declare those? Basically, what we do is we have, if we wanted to declare a uh, char character, character, we'd say char, and then we'd give it a name, char a equals, and then we give it a variable, char a equals s. Or we could do char uh, b. We don't need to give it a default variable, we can just say set that up for later use. So, when we later wanted to use it, we could just say b equals s. Notice how when I'm using a char that I'm only using single um, speech mark thingies, apostrophes, that's it. Uh, we're using only using single apostrophes because this and this in C++ are very different. If you're just using that, it's going to be one letter, one check, one character, one, well, one, what's it called, character, well, yeah, one character, one digit. If you're using that, it's expecting it to have lots and lots in there. Even if you just have one, that's still got a length of two, because on the end of that, it's going to have, well, a zero. So it's going to be S and then a zero. So you just want to use that if you're using a char, um, just to keep things simple. Uh, you can also define things if you wanted. Uh, say we wanted to define now an integer. We could say int uh, a, b, and c. So that defines all three of these as integers straight away. We could also do, um, what's next? bool. bool a equals b equals true. That sets a and b both to boolean and both to true. Uh, we could also do, uh, let's do something with a double now. Double C, I don't know, double C, what can we say about C? Well, yeah, you get the, you get the point of it. That's basically just the ways that you can define variables and stuff like that. So I'll leave this in here, I'll just comment it out. Uh, the next thing that we could get onto quite nicely is comments. If you were to do this in front of anything, you'll see it turns green. That means when it's compiling, it's going to completely ignore that line. So it's going to pretend that line doesn't exist. So that's useful if you just want to comment your code or say what you're doing somewhere. You can also do it like this using um, one, one slash and then a star, and on the end doing another star and another slash. That means it's going to ignore this whole section. In fact, we can even minimize that just to get rid of it. So it's going to ignore all of this. Um, but I'll leave this in here just so you can uh, use it for reference when you get to this tutorial. So let's try and declare something and let's um, see what we can do with it. So we've got this uh, using namespace std and initializing uh, main. I should probably get on to what this means here actually now. Uh, when you use C++, there's always what's called a main function. When you do this, this is called defining a function. Um, because you have the first thing here, I'll just put it onto the end, is the type. This is the type that it's going to return, so we could have int, or we could have double, or we could have, you could have whatever you like there. Uh, then you have the name of the function, put that in these, name, so for int we could have um, go fish, that's the name of our function, and in here we could have, um, I don't know, carrot. And then we have any arguments that it takes in brackets, it's fine to have it as nothing, but if you want, you could have some stuff in there. We won't get into that too much just yet. And then finally, you just have your first bracket and final bracket. And anything in here will be um, part of your, uh, what's it called, function. So just like that, we've got some functions. And that's all fine and nice. So this is our main function. Whenever you're compiling, it will always do the main function first. So if you were to run the program, it would always do this. Even if you have some functions before that and after that, it will find this one and do it. So in here, we're just going to say um, int a equals 12. And b, we won't define. So now if we wanted to um, set b to something, we could say b equals a plus 8. So now b is going to equal 20, so we may as well just comment that. Notice I'm always putting these semicolons at the end. And then we could say a equals a plus 1. A simpler way of saying a equals a plus 1 would be a plus equals 1 or a plus plus. So both of these would do a plus equals 1 and a plus plus. Both just add 1 to 
2, whatever A was. You can do the same with minus if you had that as minus. In fact, we'll just make a new line for that. A minus equals 1. And A minus minus. Does exactly the same stuff just as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, next thing we should get to is um, inputting and outputting, kind of. So what we do here is we'd say uh, C out. What this does, it's basically saying, I'm not sure what the C stands for, but just C out. And out would just be output, whatever. And in the output, what this means is to do put something into that. And if we had it the other way, it would be saying expect something from the next thing. So if we just do that, and then we could say C out A. And then on the end of that, we put end L. End L means end line and go to the next one. So we say C out end L, and in fact we could probably do B, into there. Now what that's going to do is it's going to, into the output on the screen, it's going to say A, which is going to equal, what does it equal? Uh, so we've got 12 plus 1, that makes it 13, minus 1, makes it 12 again. So it's going to say 12, and then it's going to have a new line, and then it's going to say what B is, which is going to be 20. So it's going to say 12, and then 20. Let's try that, we can save, go back to here, compile and run. We go, and we've got an error. We've got not defined in this scope. What this means is we do need an include. Uh, not defined in this scope means that it doesn't know what C out means. That's because when um, all of these, uh, everything that we're going to be using has to be defined in what's called an include. So in the beginning of the file, we're just going to put a new line and we're going to say hash include. And we'll put those. And this is going to be what we're including IO stream. This doesn't need one of those on the end. It's fine just like that. IO stream, that's basically input, output, stream. Doesn't really matter what that means, but that's what it is. So, compile it again. It's compiled, no errors, perfect. Now if we run it, we've got 12 and then 20, which is fine, because that's what we expected. So that's all worked nicely. Um, now we're going to just quickly, while we, do we have time? I forgot to start my timer, so I don't know how long this has been. Um, I, th I think we'll just end it there. Next episode, expect us to be going over some um, arrays, which is basically having lots of things in one in one place, um, which gets useful when you're using uh, characters, because if you just have character equals s, s, so if you wanted to have a string saying um, hello, you can't do that, because that when you have these, it expects it to be one letter. If we were to compile that, it would say there's an error because, well, let's see what happens when we compile that. There we go. Warning. Character constant too long for its type. Which means we've got a problem here because this is too long for just a single character. So how can we make C into hello instead of just one letter? Well, for a start, we'd have to put these. And when we run that, it's still going to give us an error character constant too long for its type, because a character expects it to be one letter, whereas this is lots of letters. So we, what we do is we make it an array of characters. What an array is, is basically it's just a lot of characters. So we just got a couple of characters in there, that should be fine, and now if we put on the end of here, uh, end L, end L, and then C, another end L. Oops. Now what this is going to say is what was it? Um, oh, I missed it. It's, well, yeah. Oh, uh, wait. That's fine. So we're going to have 12, 20, and then hello, because that's what our string says. I'm not sure what this error is. We'll go into that a bit later. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to be covering next time. Arrays and some other stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow, where we're going to be covering all that stuff. Vlad, signing out.